Have you gone through that messy, I'm for everybody stage in business? It's that stage where we're trying to build up our clientele and generate as much revenue as possible to create some level of stability in our business. We might know exactly who our ideal client is, but quite often we find ourselves saying yes to pretty much anyone who is willing to work with us. After all, it's money, right? It took me a really long time to learn that just because we can do something doesn't mean we should. And it took me even longer to build up the confidence muscles to say no. No, we can't change the budget. No, we can't circle back next week. And no, we can't make 137 little tiny changes hidden in an email after a deliverable has been long approved. I had to learn to qualify my clients. And by qualify clients, I just mean have a set criteria for who I was and wasn't willing to work with and the conditions I was willing to work within as well. Like I said, it took me a really long time and a lot of resistance to get there. So if you can relate to this, know that I made this video for you. Maybe you are the recovering people pleaser who is thinking, that feels incredibly rude. There is no way I can do that. Or you're the warrior who's thinking, well, if I do this, then what if no one wants to work with me? All of that resistance I have experienced in great depth and caused myself a lot of struggle because of it. But I want to tell you what happens when you do qualify your client. You don't always get your goals, but you do always get your standards. Ed Milet. This weird thing happens when you start to implement this criteria. At first, it's a little bit scary. You're saying no to revenue and you're thinking, what have I done? But if you can push through that and stand in your confidence, the clients you do say yes to are a dream to work with. They respect your time and your value. They show up for client calls. They give you the access required. They provide helpful feedback and they always pay their invoices promptly. As a result, everyone is operating under optimal conditions and together you can create the best experience and the best possible outcome for all parties involved. Now there's lots of ways that you can qualify your clients. I do it by implementing qualifying criteria at each stage in the sales process. So I'll show you what that looks like. It begins on my sales page or my services page. I make sure that I've got a few key sections that allow leads to go through and match themselves. So I don't even have to interact here. They're able to go through the content and say, okay, I'm a good fit. I'm not a good fit, this is not for me. The first one is who is this for? I outline who this is for and who this is not for. And the goal here is to provide value to everybody on that page. Even if a lead is not a good fit for working together on a project, you might still be able to provide value either by sharing a low ticket offer that is a match or sharing a valuable resource, pointing them in the right direction. Next, I include a roles and responsibilities section. I think this is a really important step that we should all include on our services page to help manage client expectations up front. We have all experienced project scope creep and long time delays due to chasing up clients or waiting for them to deliver materials to us in order to execute. This clears a lot of that up and it all comes down to being really clear that this is a collaboration where both parties have responsibilities, deliverables and timelines to meet. Next, I always go through the process of working together. I think this is a big trust builder as well. Everybody has different learning styles and preferred means of communication. So by being really clear here, we can establish whether we're going to be a good fit for communicating and collaborating throughout the project. This is also where I share timeline information. Now, I tend to be quite strict with this one because I think that being able to have control and management over our calendar resolves so many other issues that we often experience. So take the example of project scope creep or 
clients ghosting, all of that time that is spent chasing them up, waiting for deliverables, has a knock-on effect that impacts every other client's experience with you. Not only that, but it's a lot of time which is expensive. It might mean that you either have to delay other projects or um, not be able to take them on because you, you're dealing with a project that you thought was going to be wrapped up months ago. And it's exhausting. It leads to burnout. Your creativity can't flourish in that environment when a lot of your time is working around the project rather than executing on the skills you were hired for. Next, I have a frequently asked question section. And again, this is just another filter. If we can use this section to answer the common questions and objections we know are our clients typically have, then we make it really easy for them to decide whether this is a good option for them. Things like, I have a 50% non-refundable deposit. That's a big one. Being able to share that upfront and why that's important is helpful. Maybe it's on what is required to get started. For example, when I was doing website design, I really needed the client to have their website copy ready before I went on to the design phase. So things like that, being able to incorporate that in can be really helpful for you so that you don't have to answer those questions 101 times over, but it's also really helpful in qualifying leads and letting them know, okay, this is what we need before we can begin a project. And again, on that form, I include a lot of questions and I make sure those important qualifiers are set to required so that a lead can actually submit that project inquiry without matching that criteria. So that could be, I have a budget of at least X to begin, or um, I have read through the terms and conditions and I'm happy with them, things like that. So you can add qualifiers to your project inquiry form and that tends to be a lot more effective than send an email. Because if we think about it, if we're just sending an email to make a project inquiry, you might then have to qualify that lead through the email or jump on a sales call. And if that lead isn't a good fit, then you have both spent a lot of time and resources and energy with no positive outcome as such. Whereas if we add qualifiers to the project inquiry form, then it means that it's only qualified leads coming through and anyone who is not a fit doesn't have to waste their time either. Now I'll include a link to my current services page if you want to peek at it and you can see in detail what I've included on there. Of course you would want to customize it and make it your own but it could be a helpful starting point if you're looking to implement some of this in your own business. Now I also have a free Notion template and Zap that goes along with it so that anyone who fills out my project inquiry form on Squarespace automatically is added to my sales CRM in Notion. So if you are a user of Notion and Squarespace, I'll include a link to that as well. Once I receive a project inquiry, typically they are a good fit, but I still jump on a quick 20 minute sales call. And again, here we're just learning a little bit more about each other and establishing if we're a good fit to work together. Now this one is a little bit tricky because it's face to face. I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but there have been times I've been in a sales call and my head is screaming, no, this is a terrible idea. This is not a good fit, but my mouth says yes. And now I'm locked into a project. So to overcome this, I had to really learn to practice questions, active listening, and then pausing and waiting before responding to whatever the lead had to say. That little breath helped me to stop over explaining and justifying and instead just clarify and answer directly. For example, if a client says, why is this so expensive? My answer is typically, these are the prices that I charge for these services and this is the value that I deliver. Is that a good fit for you? If the client asks, can we start now and I'll just pay you at the end? I'll answer something like, unfortunately, we do require a 50% non-refundable deposit upfront and that secures your project slot. So always answer and be helpful, but a lot less justification. 
The reason this is so important is if we are confident up front and we manage those expectations up front, then we're less likely to receive pushback on boundaries. If we start compromising them at this stage, we sort of offer an in for that to be the standard throughout the project. Now, once that sales call is complete, my next step is to send a brand proposal. And here I lay everything out again, even if we've discussed it all and verbally agreed upon everything, including terms and conditions on the sales call, I will still lay it out in written format so everything is clear. And that is the document that the client is signing. It includes my process, timelines, deliverables, and of course, terms and conditions. And this is another template that I give away for free. So if you want to access that, check the link in the description. And this is probably a good point to note that this is for clients too. They're qualifying us just as much as we are qualifying them. We are trying to establish a good fit so that we can achieve a great outcome together. Managing all of those expectations up front makes the whole project run smoother. And that leads me into mindset. Mindset plays the biggest role in everything we do, especially as business owners and operators. We are working for our clients, but they also have the privilege of working with us. And I think it's important to really emphasize that last part. If you are new to qualifying clients, this can feel foreign. So often we can fall into this trap where effectively we're working for our client and they are our boss. So we start acting and treating ourselves like an employee and forget that we get to set the rules or we get to set the standard for working with us. And the client absolutely has the option to decide, yes, I want to do that or no, I do not. The moment that clicks, it feels empowering. Confidence becomes a side effect of implementing this new standard consistently. Energy transference is so real. And as we show up as our most confident selves, we signal trust the foundation of any good working relationship. Now this video is one of those, I don't know who needs to hear it, but I know that somebody does. If that's you, I want to encourage you to let go of resistance and start qualifying your clients. I promise you only good can come from it, especially if you're trying to build a sustainable business. And if this is an area where you still feel a bit vulnerable or unsure or want to chat more, leave a comment below. We're here to learn and grow together.